This is the 572XP. And this is our trusty 562XP, which you can't tell because this baby has been around. Uh, it's been used, it's been abused, but thought we'd just show you uh, some comparisons there between the two of them. Um, I know a lot of people are saying, why not compare the 572 to the 576? Honestly, because i um, not a big fan of the 576, and yeah, the 576 is going to be going away because of this 572. So, um, didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time on that 576 XP. And um, the other thing is, I I know a few people that run them and like them, but I know a lot more people that have a 372 XP and a 562 XP. So that's why we were comparing the 372 XP to the 572 in the one video. And uh, that's why we decided to get out our 562 XP to show you the, the differences and the similarities between these two saws here. Um, a lot of features are the same between the two. Uh, you can see looking at them there that they they look pretty similar um, as far as the, the style of them and everything. You know, typical 500 series um, fairings and, and lines and stuff on there. Uh, 572 XP is definitely a bit bigger. Uh, it's a bit longer by about a half an inch or an inch or so. And it's definitely wider, as you can see. It also sits just a hair higher. So, of course, because it's a little bit bigger, it's going to weigh a little more, too. Um, you could probably guess that one pretty easily. Okay, you can see that both the 562 XP and 572 XP have the uh, the black felling sights on them. They both have the compression release. Um, they both have purge bulbs here. Um, basically, the the tops. I mean, there's a lot of similarities similarities there between the air cover, uh, air cleaner covers, and uh, the uh, recoil starter, just the 562 XP, has a little bit smaller starter than the 572. Flip-up caps on both of them. Uh, sight window back here for the fuel tank on both of them. The anti-vibe system. Same smart start um, switch here on both of them. You know, on the outside, again, like I said, just a lot of similarities there. Um, when you open them up, take the cover off there's definitely a difference there because as you might have read and might have heard they put a lot of time and a lot of effort into the air filtration system on the 572 xp uh, they wanted to improve it over the 562 xp and uh, improve it a bit over the 372 xp style of, of air filter and they definitely did that it's uh, sealed up a lot better so you're going to get a lot more lifetime out of the the saw because you're not going to get any kind of dirt ingestion in there like you would with some of the other styles of filters and as you can see on our 562 xp definitely time for a uh, new filter there but that's the awesome part of autotune keeps compensating for those dirty air filters and uh still runs at peak performance even with a, a dirty air filter uh it's a blessing and a curse all at the same time huh but uh you know looking at the mufflers same style muffler, just a little bit bigger on the 572. You can see there, not a whole lot of difference between them. Just the size, really. Um, basically the same same design for the most part. Uh, both have the dog spike on the inside. Um, unlike the 372 XP, the 572 does not have it on the outside, as you might have saw in our one video. We're comparing the, the 572 to the 372. So that's a big difference there on it. You know, it's more like the uh, the 562 XP with that one inner dog spike and not the outer one. Uh, big difference here between these two. And I was kind of surprised when I took this apart. But on uh, the 562 XP, they have the, the clutch on the outside. A little tough to see there. The clutch is on the outside. And the uh, the rim sprocket is on the inside and the reason why they did that was because it moves the bar closer to your your center point of your saw to change the gyroscopics of it to make this thing 
more maneuverable and easier to roll around, you know, um, you're cutting down trees or lemon or whatever you're doing with it. They did not do that on the 572 XP. They left it on the outside, just like on the 372 and uh, the other bigger saws. So I was kind of surprised about that. But one good thing about this is if it does fall into the wrong person's hands that doesn't know what they're doing, chain break is in there. No chain break in the cover. So you don't have to worry about anybody prying that thing off of there and then not being able to get it back on like you see constantly with the 400 series saws. And believe it or not, I see it a lot with 562s and 550 XPs. Um, pro saws, but evidently the people using them are not very professional or not even very familiar with a chainsaw and how a chain break works. Um, so that's definitely a big difference there between these two saws. Like I said, the bar is going to be further out on the three or on the 572 XP, so that makes this thing even wider overall than the 562 XP. Um, you know, as far as your center line and the gyroscopics of it and the maneuverability of the saw, not a big deal because you're probably not going to be doing a whole bunch of limbing and stuff like that with this 572 XP. Um, this is mostly going to be for just dropping trees, you know. Every now and then, I guess, you know, if you got one and you want to use it for that, you can, but it's going to be a little bit heavy, you know. <laughs> After a, a long day of running this thing, you're going to feel it compared to the 562 XP or a 550 XP, but, hey, you know, if you got it, why not use it? I couldn't blame you there. I mean, I love running these things. These 572s are just unbelievable. If you've ever ran a 562 XP... And if you've ever ran a 372 XP, you will notice a difference with this 572 XP. It will just flat out run. The performance between this one and the 562 XP, this is on a whole nother level right here. Easily, easily to, to tell that, you know, as soon as you fire this thing up, whether you got a 20 inch bar, 24 inch bar, 28 inch bar, this is just a running saw. Um... I don't really know how to describe it. Uh, you try one and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, I just, I haven't found much that can bog one of these things down. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. So again, you can see the wires there. This has the auto tune, just like the 562 XP. Everybody knows that. Some people like the auto tune. Some people complain about it and blame it for every problem with their saw. Um, this 562 XP, as you can see, is been through the mill and we have not had a single issue with it um definitely no auto tune problems we do update it you know like every six months or so plug it into the computer make sure things are good to go with it um just check that everything's run right we also when we take it out to run it um fire it up and do a rip cut you know to get the computer to recalibrate itself and uh, make sure it's running at the best possible um, performance or best possible settings for the altitude, the uh, dirtiness of the air filter, uh, temperatures and things like that, which if you're not familiar with an autotune saw, that's what you need to do. You need to fire it up. You need to take and just do a rip cut right down the log, you know, put it under load for just a, a, a minute or two and, you know, get it wide open throttle, put it under that load and give the uh, computer a time to just recalibrate for recalibrate for all those conditions, and you're going to have a great running saw. Simple enough to do, right? You know, if you're not doing that, and you're just cutting down through, slicing up your logs, or dropping a tree and shutting it off, that computer's never going to calibrate for any of those things going on, and it could possibly just not run at peak performance. So before you go blaming the saw or blaming the auto tune module, learn how to properly run one and that's going to eliminate a lot of your problems so just a little tip there yeah other than that there's not a whole lot of like really big glaring differences here um between these saws as far as the saws themselves now one thing that is um kind of odd to me was this is the this is the uh chain cover for the 572 xp and um, I was a bit surprised about that because this is the one from our 562 XP here. Get that 
into the picture there better. Um, you can see that the one on the 570 or the 562 XP has way more um, just ribs to it and is a lot beefier. Um, you can tell it when you hold this thing. It's just a lot stronger than the one on the 572 XP. I'm guessing the only reason that is is because this one has the brake band in it, so it's got to be a lot stronger, but I would have thought that they would have made this one just a bit heavier. You know, it. I don't know. It, it It's not plastic, but it kind of has a plastic feel to it. Um, you take one off and you'll see what I mean. It, it's very lightweight, so hopefully that holds up well. Time will tell. Um, you know, again, these things have been out in Europe for, I think, two years now, so... Obviously, if there would have been a problem with it, they would have done something about it. But, you know, how we are here in the United States. We like to just use and abuse stuff and uh, torture test it to see what it can take before it finally snaps and breaks. <laughs> so, again, there's the two covers. 572, 562. You can see we've used it and abused it. A lot of runtime on this saw. Okay, so you heard us say that the 572 XP is an auto-tune saw. And for those of you that don't know and are wondering what does that mean that it's auto-tuned, what it is is right here, this black plastic box. It's actually a microprocessor that eliminates the uh, adjustment screws on the side of the carburetor. This little microprocessor here does all the adjustment for you. So it adjusts the carburetor based on altitude, temperature, air filter condition, fuel conditions, things like that, for the saw to reach its peak performance. So again, we're not going to get into everything involved here with auto-tune and how it works and all those things. Um, we just explained to you there what it does. So it's basically like if you were running your chainsaw and your buddy is standing right there next to you with a screwdriver and just constantly adjusting that carburetor over and over again to keep reaching maximum performance. Um, that's what you're getting here. So, uh, you know, if you've used one of these and you've had problems with your saw and you're blaming the auto tune, it probably wasn't the auto tune. And 95% of the time, if there's a problem with an auto tune chainsaw, it's just a regular chainsaw problem. Um, I'll just leave it at that. But, uh, we'll show you here exactly what this does and the kind of information that's stored on the Autotune. So we got to hook this up to our common service tool and go from there. This is the home page of the common service tool. And yes, this is only available to dealers or real close friends of dealers. Um, so this is what you plug into the saw and you can view this information on um, you know laptop or desktop. And you can see there, it's a 572 XP. We have the model number. We have the serial number. And it tells us that our firmware is up to date. That's the firmware in the Autotune module. Um, you use the common service tool to update that firmware every now and again. But this keeps track of a lot of information. It's a lot of stuff stored on that little microprocessor that uh, comes in really handy when you're going to work on the saw or you want to trade it in or you're buying a used one, things like that. Um, but anyway, what we're going to look at here is the operating history of this saw. That's what we're going to focus on to show you what this Autotune module does as the saw is ran. So this is the operating history stored inside the Autotune module. You can see we got different temperatures there. Um, this saw has a total of 1 minute and 17 seconds runtime because it's brand new. And here's the current fuel settings. This would be like where the needles would be adjusted at on the carburetor. You see the current low is at 80. The current high is at 78. Um, the minimum, maximum, average, you don't have to worry about that. But what will happen is, is the more the saw is ran, those numbers will change to compensate for the conditions. Um, you know, the air filter, the, the fuel, the altitude, the temperature, things like that, like we told you before. Um, the... Autotune module is going to adjust that carburetor based on those conditions. So let's take this thing out and give it a run.
right, so let's go back and look at our original settings. When we had the 1 minute and 17 seconds of runtime when it was brand new, we had a current low of 80 and a current high of 78 for our fuel settings. So now that we've ran it for a while, uh, let's see where exactly this is at. All right, so now that we have a little over 25 minutes of runtime on this 572 XP, check out these new fuel settings. The current low is now 56. The current high is 82. The um, minimum high was 69. The max was 87. And the average high was 79. So what does all that mean? Well, that means that our current low went from 80 down to 56. Current high went from 82 to 78. So whenever the numbers drop, that means that the Auto 2 module is richening up the fuel mixture in the carburetor. So it made these adjustments, and you're probably wondering, well, is that good? Is that bad? Well, the average range for an Auto Tune saw is 60 to 110 on these settings. So our current high is right about the middle. Our current low is a little bit rich, but... Um, you know, as you run the saw, it's going to adjust more and more as you run it. And this was just adjusting because uh, being brand new, you know, it had a good way to go until it got everything set up and running right um, and adjusted for the temperatures and the uh, the altitude we were at and, and the condition of the fuel we were running in it. So you can see that's a pretty big change there. So how about if we run it a little bit longer? All right, so here's a better look at the information stored inside the Auto-Tune, a little bit wider uh, shot here. Um, you can see now we have 12 hours, 20 minutes, and 40 seconds on this 572 XP. It's been started 164 times, and you can see that the carburetor has adjusted itself again and uh, changed now. The current low is 66, and originally, remember, it was 80. The current high is at 74 and it was originally 78 the minimum high 62 it was originally 76 the maximum high is now at 92 it was at 78 and the average high is still 78 like original when uh it had what one minute and 17 seconds on it when it's brand new out of the box and you can see over there if you look at the history of the carburetor temperatures um, you can see the minimum temperature was 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The max was 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, and the average was 84.2. So this was in a lot of different temperatures, and that's why you get all these different adjustments. Remember, it, it compensates for the temperature of the carburetor, along with the condition of the air filter, humidity, altitude, um, quality of fuel, things like that. So... That's why you're seeing a lot of these adjustments that it's making. Look at those temperature differences it had to compensate for. And then you see the RPM range there. Um, you know, how many or what the RPM range was that it spent the percentage of time at that it was running. So a lot of information stored on this little microprocessor on the side of this Autotune module. Now, again, without going into the whole spiel of how Autotune works and what all is involved with it, Auto-Tune adjusts that carburetor every three to five minutes. The chainsaw has to be running at wide open throttle and needs to be under a load, really. You know, work the thing so it can adjust for what it's going to be doing and the conditions it's going to be doing it in. So when you first start the saw up, let it warm up, and then take it just do a rip cut down a log. That's the best way to put this thing under a load. It will re retune itself and adjust for what you're doing. If you're still, you know, concerned that maybe you have some kind of a problem with your Auto-Tune, take it to your dealer and get the firmware updated. You know, have them check it out. You know, the other big thing to do is make sure to read your manual when you buy an Auto-Tune saw or any chainsaw or any power equipment. You know, read the manual, learn the proper procedure to start a chainsaw when it's hot. They're all the same. They all have the same procedure from Husqvarna for starting them when they're hot. The Auto-Tune saws are no different. You can complain that, oh, mine didn't start when it was hot. Well, did you read the book? Do you know how to do it the right way? Or are you just doing it the way you feel like doing it? You know, something to consider. So take that advice there, you know. Do the rip cut. Let the carburetor tune itself. And uh, every now and then, take it back to your dealer. Make sure your firmware is up to date. 
and make sure you read your manual and you learn how to operate the thing correctly. So that's about going to do it for our look here at the 572 XP. Hope you guys liked this video and learned a little something here. As always, if you did, uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You know, drop some comments below. But uh, yeah, this 572 XP, it's been uh, long overdue coming here to the United States. We've been waiting on this one for a long time. And if you get the opportunity to run one, don't pass it up. You're going to love this thing. Uh, power, performance, maneuverability, the, the size, um, it's a great all-around saw. Um, definitely check one out, you know. It, it couldn't have got here faster, you know. Um, like I said, we've just been waiting on this one for a long time, and uh, it was really hyped up by Husqvarna, and it's definitely living up to that hype. So head to your dealer and check one out. So, All right, we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks for watching.